Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we are attempting a Jenga Sudoku, believe it or not. It's called Stack 'em Up, Knock 'em Down uh, by Rockrat Zero, uh, which is uh, exactly my experience of Jenga, where, um, where, yes, things do tend to tumble. And in fact, it always seems to me that this this happens. My, my opponent on the Jenga board will somehow allow these two G-shaped blocks to exist and float in space, even though nothing appears to be holding them up. Um, and the moment I just lay my fingers on a block, of course, the whole thing falls. Um, anyway, this is the this is the work of Rockrat Zero. It is a puzzle that um, we've had recommended a lot of times, perhaps more times than any other puzzle. Apparently, it's 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 quite easy. This one. So it's been likened to a puzzle that we did a few months ago on the channel, which we called something like the hardest, either the easiest or hardest. Um, arithmetic quiz that, that, you, that you've ever seen. It was uh, this puzzle here, which I've managed to not get in the window. Um, well, it's, it's a real, I mean, this is just beautiful. This was by um, M Nasty 2. Um, and you can see, you can see exactly how it works. And it, you have to fill it in like a Sudoku. And um, Rock Rat Zero's puzzle here, the Jenga one, is apparently a bit like that. One star out of five on Logic Masters Germany. So if you do have particularly kids in your house, who've shown an interest in Variant Sudoku, please give them this to have a go at. Apparently it is very, very approachable today. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about? Well, we did um, a bonus crossword video today. Friday, as usual, is the masterclass day where we have a go at the Times crossword. So there's a video up there of me doing battle with it. So if you enjoy cryptic crosswords, do take a look at that. Um, and I've got some announcements, of course. Let's start by saying a slightly belated birthday. I'm sorry, Glum Hippo. I know it was your birthday on Wednesday. I don't know how I didn't I didn't put it in my diary. I did, I'd meant to, but it was Glum Hippo's birthday on Wednesday. We, we wish him a very happy birthday. He is the man, of course, behind our monthly reward on Patreon. It was even less of an excuse for forgetting his birthday. Um, but Glum Hippo, I hope you had... Um, I hope you had a, a day filled with chocolate cake of the with the correct ratio, of course. Um, next, Josh over in Nashville, Tennessee. It's your birthday today. And I know this because your girlfriend Shelby wrote to us. Uh, and apparently uh, she told us that you watch every single night um, you watch the channel. So good man. And I hope you have a brilliant day today. Another another constructor's birthday today. Pia Tarto, no less. Uh, Pia Tarto is responsible for many brilliant puzzles that we've shown on the channel before uh, and in fact I can reveal we have a setting video by none other than Pietato coming up on the channel soon. Um, I've actually been waiting for Mark to get back from holiday because the size of the file, it's not a particularly long video, it's only 40 minutes I think, um, but the size of the file is like 10 gigabytes and at my, at my upload and download speed here in little old Surrey, that is not that is not a funny size of a video. So uh, that will appear on the channel as soon as Mark is home from France. Um, and then what else have I got? Oh, one more birthday today. Well, two more birthdays for twins over there in Germany. Ludwig and Georgie, it's your birthday today. You've both turned 17. Well, many congratulations. And I am assured that you are having chocolate cake today. So, um, well, it's going to be a good day. That's what we can say. Now, now that's all the announcements. So let's have a look at Stack 'em Up and Knock 'em Down by Rockrat Zero. And I will read you the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each into every row, into every column, and to, into every three by three box. Uh, digits connected by white dots are consecutive. So these two squares have to be consecutive. Um, which is those two squares have to be, oh no, <laughs> managed to pick out a black dot. <laughs> That's, oh, I know what's on that black dot actually. Um, so you can see there's some letters in these. These have to be consecutive. White dots have to contain consecutive digits. Um, di digits connected by black dots are in a one to two ratio. Uh, not all dots are necessarily given. Okay, so imagine these two squares were one and two. You can see these are consecutive. So they don't need to have a white dot between them um, to be in the puzzle and consecutive. We just know those two are definitely consecutive. Those two are definitely consecutive. Black dots, uh, we're told that they're in a ratio of one to two. That is a posh way of saying 
that one digit is double the other. So one of those digits is double the other. We don't know which way round that is. Jenga blocks are killer cages. Uh, the digits within the block must sum to the total if given in the top left corner of the block. So several of these have got letters in them, but um, well, that though these add up to nine, those add up to 11. Try to see if there's any, these add up to five. There's another one down there that adds up to five. Um, some block totals are replaced with the letters Jenga and must be determined by the solver. The values of the letters increase alphabetically, i.e. A is less than E. Right, so let's just think about that for a moment. So what we're being told is that A is the smallest total, um, then, then E, then G, I suppose. G is, so it's going to go A, E, G. Um, is that right? That feels right. And then, then it's going to be J, and then it's going to be N. So A, E, J, N is what we're going to have to work with. So N, you can see there's an N cage there. That is going to be the highest cage we're going to find in this puzzle. Um, just wondering if there's more than one N cage. This is a bit of a, a lonely end cage, I think. I can't see another one. There might be another one. I, I can't see it immediately. Um, it, th it then says, uh, note that two blocks have fallen and are skewed. The cage totals and dots apply within the blocks. Imagine they only cover the two cells diagonally. Oh yeah, okay. So that all that's saying is that those two squares add up to A and those two squares are in a one to two ratio. I think that's for, I, I see that that's just there in case anybody was to try and say, ah, well, this is part of the A cage. It's clearly not. It's clearly not intended to be. Now, do have a go at this. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm going to start with some things I saw as I was describing the rules, actually. So two cells or two digits that are consecutive that add up to five. Well, that's got to be two and three. Um, which I guess means that this square here, if you think about the ways that two, di two Sudoku digits can add up to five, you've, it's either going to be a two, three pair or it's going to be a one, four pair. And this cell can be neither one, or it can be neither two nor three. So it must, this must be a one, four pair. Um, this nine cage here, we need two digits here that are in a ratio of one to two. So um, this has to be three and six. That's the only way that's going to work. Um, one way of thinking about that algebraically, if you want, to, if you if you're not familiar with uh, black crocky dots, is to note that if one of these digits is double the other, let's say it's x and two x, then the sum of the cage is three x, which tells you immediately that uh, x is equal to three because nine divided by three is x. So that's you you could do it that way if you're if you're minded to. An 11 cage with consecutive digits has got to be a 5-6 cage. There's another 2-3 cage down at the bottom here. Um, I might be running out of gimmies here. Oh, if I've got a 5-6 there, that's got to be a 3. I've got my first digit in the puzzle. Um, hang on. Let's just, let's just have a think about this. What do we do next? I think I've used up all of the gimmies. All right, we're going to have to think that now then. Um, I'm not sure where the best place to start is. Perhaps perhaps this black dot, where which can't have a 2 or a 3 on it. So if we think about the digits that are... That, yeah, that, this is a sensible place to think. Because if we think about the digits that do qualify for black dot status in a Sudoku puzzle, we've got the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 8. Those are the only digits that can be in a 1 to 2 ratio with another Sudoku digit. Another way of thinking about that is, what would you do with 5, 7 or 9? Well, 5, 7 and 9 won't work. 5 in, in, a, in a 1 to 2 ratio is going to be in a 1 to 2 ratio with 2 and a half or 10. 7 with 3 and a half or 14. 9 with 18 or 4 and a half. None of those are Sudoku digits. So what can we put on this black dot? Well, I think only 4 and 8 is going to work. Um, whoops, and I managed to type in 5. But 4 and 8, because we can't put 1, 2 on, because that's going to be a problem here. So this this is 4 and 8. This is 1, this is 4. By our little old friend Sudoku. Mm, okay. Um, 
All right, well, let's actually just take a quick look at this because we are going to be able to narrow down the value of j now overall. And that's because if we think about the nature of a consecutive dot, it's going to have an odd and an even number on it. That, that is the nature of numbers. Now, the, the even number that's going to be on this dot can't be 2, 4 or 8, so it has to be 6. So there's going to be a 6 on there along with a 5 or a 7. Um, I don't think I know which, but that does now allow us to note that the value of j, which has been obscured by my pencil mark there, but the value of j is going to be 4, it's going to be 18, isn't it? Plus 5 or 7, so 23 or 25 is the value of j. Now j, it alphabetically, is going to be bigger it's obviously bigger than a, e, and g. So the only thing that the only the only cage in the puzzle uh, is any n cage. N cages have to now be bigger than a minimum of twenty three. So that n cage is at least a, a value twenty four. Well, that's quite interesting because that can't be that big. So that, this black dot can't be four eight. So the maximum size of that is three six. It probably has to be 3, 6. If it wasn't 3, 6, it would have to be 1, 2. And there's no way you could make a domino add up to, uh, well, it would have to add up to 21. Because the minimum this adds up to is 24. Because it's got to be bigger than this. And the minimum this is, is 23. So that is a 3, 6 pair. Which, mean, which means we get the 6 at the top of the grid. Very nice. Uh, we haven't made our Jenga tower tumble yet. Now, this is 9, so it, the minimum value of this now is 15, I think, and it's consecutive digits, so it could be 7, 8. That would work. Um, but it's got, okay, it's got to have an 8 on it, doesn't it? Because it's got to have an even digit. It's got to have an even digit that's, um, that's definitely got to be higher than 6, um, because... If it has one lower than six, it's not going to get to the requisite number. So this, oh, well, okay, it's got eight on it, sorry. There we go. We can just do the Sudoku. So this is seven or nine. But, but I think at either value it's going to work, isn't it? Hmm. So perhaps we don't... Well, no, it does depend. If that's seven, then that has to be nine. But that could be 5, and then that could be 7 or 9. Right. All right, so are we about to get stuck? <laughs> that's, that's the worry. Um, possibly. Let me think about this. Is, have we got... We've probably got, like, loads of Sudoku that I can do that I've not really thought about. Um... I'm not seeing immediately. I, I really don't. I'm not sure where I should be looking. G is capable of existing in a four cell cage and a two cell cage. Have we got any other cages that are valued at N or J? That would be the sensible thing to do. The answer seems to be no, unfortunately. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, okay, I hadn't seen this, but, but but this is clearly where we need to look. There's an A cage that's a two-cell cage with a black dot. Therefore, it must, because of the, the algebra that we did earlier, we know that these two cells sum up to a number that's divisible by 3. So this the, the maximum they could be is 4, 8. So it's either 12, 9, 6, or 3 is the value of A. But this is a four cell cage. Now four cells in Sudoku, the minimum we could make them, if we make them one, two, three, and four, that's that they would add to 10. Um, so in fact, that must be four, eight. That's nice, that's nice. So that's got to be four, eight, because this is adding up to at least 10 and the next lowest value of, of A on a black dot would be three, six, which actually that can't be anyway, but that would mean this had to add up to nine, which would be an impossibility. So this is adding up to, to uh, to 12. Now, 
a, a white dot, the sum of a white dot digits, which is the sum of consecutive digits, is going to be odd, isn't it? So to make this add up to an even number overall, this black dot has to add up to an even, uh, sorry, an odd number. So this is either going to be a 1-2 pair or it's going to be a 3-6 pair. It's got to be one of those. It can't be, it can't be 4-8 very obviously and it can't be 2-4 because then these this we couldn't make the the parity work on the white dot. So if this is 1-2, this is 4-5 and if this is 3-6, this is 1-2. So there's always a 1 and a 2 in this cage. bobbins that doesn't do anything <laughs> oh oh i see okay and then i was suddenly worried i'd broken a because this is a as well but that's fine isn't it a is 12 and it can't be 5 7 it can't be 4 8 so that's 3 9 okay that's the only other way of making that work so these squares are 1 2 and 7 in some order we don't know anything yet about g i don't think We've got, ah, uh, hang on. We've got, the, right, look at this. This is A. It's a four cell cage that's made up of a white dot and a black dot. And that's a four cell cage that's got exactly the same um, consti or constituency. So this has got to be one, two, four, or five, and that's got to be one, two, three, or six. Now, one and three come out of this square, which means that two and six come out of this square. So trying to see if the Sudoku's done. Uh, oh no. Um, don't think so. Not sure. Okay, so maybe we maybe what we do now is note that if A is twelve, E has to be more than twelve. So what's this? This can't be it can't have a 5 on it, can it? Because then it wouldn't get big enough. It could have a 6 on it, but only if it was 6 and 7. So these digits are from 6, 7, 8 and 9. But do we know the value of anything else? No, we don't. Well, what was... J was... No, J was 23 at least. N was 24 at least. So we don't know G. G is here. Well, okay, I mean, we, we can't, the, the minimum value of this is, oh no, I was thinking, yeah, that's, if that's six, six seven, that could be eight, nine. But what, how else could G be constituted? Because we know that the even digit on on here is six or eight. Well, maybe or maybe you do it with the odd digit. But if you if, if you can't put nine on here now because you couldn't make G higher. So now now the odd digit on E is definitely seven. And if this was seven eight, you couldn't make G higher because G has to be consecutive. So that's got to be nine eight. This has got to be six seven. Which are which is going to fix the value? Well, not the value, but the the way that A works in box A. This is clever. Okay, so that's two. That's one. This is a four-five pair. This is now a three. That's a two. That's not a three. That's not a one. Um, can we go? Yes, we can. Look, three and six at the top. Is that going to keep going? Yeah, we've managed to knock three off this black dot, so we can knock six off it as well. So the two and the one get placed. Maverick's just taken off, unsurprisingly. We've got a four five pair in this column, so that's got to be eight, that's got to be four, that's got to be four, that's got to be five, that's got to be seven. That's told us the value, well, actually it's told us lots of things. <laughs> that's told us the value of J, which is now 25. So this has to hopefully add up to more than that. 9 and 17 is 26. So that's great. That's great. Everything works. Um, what did we work out G was? Oh, G. Well, G is 17. So actually, we didn't even need the white dot to tell us that's got to be 17 as well. Uh, in this column, we've not put in a digit, which is the digit 2, which has to go on that white dot. So that digit has to be a 3, because it can't be a 1, but needs to be consecutive with 2. E is E is 13, so that's an 8. I think that math seems to work, doesn't it? Um, 
that's five, that's four by mathematic, or no, using this four here. That's eight, that's nine by the value of this. That's eight, that's nine. Misclicks galore going on, that's not gonna help, is it? Um, what's that digit? Five. That's five, that's six, that's six, that's seven. We can put seven in the corner of box five. I'm not sure, we might be done here, you know. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm left with a four nine pair here. And that does add up to E because we know E is, e is 13. Um, what about, where does six go in this box? It's got to go in the, in the corner by Sudoku. So these squares are one, two and seven. We've actually got roping I've now noticed in the central three rows. So those squares there are three, eight, and nine. We need this, this digit, these two digits have to be consecutive, don't we? So we can take one out of there and nine out of here. What's, it, what's G adding up to? G is 17. So, well, it can't be seven, eight because then these two squares would both have to be ones. So it's got to be two, three. Um, which means these are adding up to 12 and they're on a, uh, a black dot. So they're four and eight. In fact, we can just write them in eight and four in the other, the other way around eight, four. This black dot hasn't got four on it and it can't be a one, two pair because this square could be neither one nor two. So this is three, six, which is resolved. Ha <laughs> ha. No three in the corner there. No three in the corner here. No three in the corner. No, no threes in the corner today, I'm afraid. No singing. Some of you will be relieved. Um, okay, six, seven, and nine. So this square is seven or nine. This square is seven or nine. We can place the six. Now, A is, what's A? I've forgotten. A is, uh, oh, that doesn't look right. What's gone on there? I don't want to put six there because that would, oh, hang on. No, I, I've just done Sudoku like a gibbering chimp, haven't I? Um, this can't be, I haven't put six in this row. That's six, that's seven or nine, thank goodness. So that's three or five and it has to be five. There we go. So we've got to put five and seven in or the three would clash. Therefore, that's the nine. That's not nine. G, I can't remember what G is. Oh, this is an eight, nine pair. So that's resolved. Sorry, eight and nine can go in. Three and two can go in at the top. This is a one, seven pair. This is a four, five pair. We can do that. Um, right, five in this box is done. One, six, seven and nine. Can we do that? Is that a naked single now? I think that can only be seven. It sees six, nine and one. So this is one, six, nine in the final column, which allows us to write seven into the corner. We haven't put one and eight into the bottom row, but we can do that now. So these squares are two and five, which we can do. The one and the seven go in. Uh, this is not two. So we've got a one, seven pair in column three. I think the puzzle is substantially finished, isn't it? I think, I think we've 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 captured the logic in it. Um, we've got a six oh six nine pair left in row two, but I've got a six here, so that's got to be nine. That's got to be six. We're left with a one nine pair, which is resolved. We can no, we can't place one up there. One and five, yes, okay, we can do it using the five. That gets us the one and the three. That places the one and the seven. Now we've got the three and the nine to do. Uh, we've got two and four to put, put in here, which we can do. And it finishes. Oh, no, I've not finished it. Nine and four. What a cute puzzle. Let's see if it's right. Oh, I can't I can't get to the, the ticky button. Which is the ticky button? Is it that one? Sorry, the 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 the, the my window is in a different size today. This this has obviously been set up very carefully. This puzzle. It's like you're ripping the side block out of my mental Jenga. <laughs> very whoa 511 people have solved this that is an extraordinary number i mean you know to be honest the the only puzzles that tend to get to those levels are the gas puzzles on the on the discord server which i wholeheartedly recommend to you they are wonderful ways of learning how to do variant sudoku there's one of those every day 
uh, and puzzles that actually appeared on the channel. So Rock Rat Zero has definitely um, uh, captured the imagination of the audience with this one. And I'm not surprised. It's very, it's very cute, isn't it? And so there's a little bit of parody going on, a little bit of black dot knowledge necessary, but not too much. And it's, it's, it flows very nicely. So a lot of fun um, and a nice way to spend a Friday evening. I hope you agree. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this. We enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.